Welcome to How to Yu-Gi-Oh! Historic Set The New Challengers Release date November 6th, 2014 This set introduces Klee, Falafel, and Frightfa. So why is this historic set? Well, this set introduces the bombastic Klee. There is sauce. Now, Klee is very important to Yu-Gi-Oh! As Klee introduced what we know today as a boss monster. Indeed, before Klee's introduction, boss monsters did not exist in Yu-Gi-Oh! The truth you need to know. Essentially, Yu-Gi-Oh! at this point in time, before 2014, what we had were not boss monsters, but we had were strong monsters. The aspect of a boss monster is a monster that has an effect that um, the opponent cannot get rid of it and it locks the opponent out of a mechanic or summoning or effects, such sort of things. That sounds oddly familiar. So boss monsters didn't exist. We did have at this point something like shooting quasar dragon. However, shooting quasar dragon required a lot of resources to make and it only had one omni negate. And when he would destroy it or it left the field, it would float into a low, uh, weaker version of itself, you know, shooting star dragon and whatever and so on and so forth so the aspect of a boss monster now existed in clee and aptly clee clifford towers indeed as towers as it would as it would be affectionately named by the community is the first boss monster in Yu-Gi-Oh that really appeared that could not be beaten when this card was summoned Monster effects that had a rank that had a rank of 10 or lower or monsters with a level 10 or lower could not activate their effects. This was the first monster floodgate in our competitive scene. Did we have floodgates before in Yu-Gi-Oh? Absolutely. But again, this was reserved on traps such as skill drain or mind drain or lose one turn, such sort of things were familiar and we see them on traps or possibly spells, you know, but to see it on a monster, right, was unheard of in Yu-Gi-Oh! at this point in time, which is why Klee is so important as an archetype introducing this. And this is also part of the reason why uh, a lot of people say Yu-Gi-Oh! is a game based on negates. This is where it festers and this is where it comes from. Klee is what introduced this negate style um, Yu-Gi-Oh that we have that we have right now. It started from this point. Did we have negates in Yu-Gi-Oh? Absolutely, but they were not our main focus. We we had FTKs for sure, like you know Frog FTK. We had Victory Dragon back in the day that you could attack and win. We had all manners of interesting decks or Teng Tengu Plant. You know, things like that. We had loads of interesting decks in Yu-Gi-Oh! But there was a recurring trend with all these decks. To make them, they had interesting gameplay loops, interesting whatever. And even when a, when a gameplay loop was um, disgusting, it was disgusting because of an F... It, that was usually would be an FTK would be an FTK variant, which had an effect that was not once per turn. And usually they would be banned straight away. But FTKs were the exception and weren't the rule. And basically disgusting effects that locked your opponent or board states or game states that happened that you could not respond to and allowed your opponent just to win or just this feeling of oppression. It was there, but it wasn't there to a huge degree. And usually if it was there, it was very skillful. For example, the Necros... Um, Mirror match at the time that came, like, you know, a few years before this, before Klee's introduction, was a very skillful game. Sure, we had, like, uh, the Jin mon the Jin, the Jin uh, level 3 fiend monster that when used for ritual summon, neither player can special summon monsters. But the fact of the matter is, it was a very skillful meta at this point in time. Yeah. And that's all I've got to say, really. Let's move on. 
Okay, so value card, Ghost Rare, Dark Rebellion, XYZ Dragon. Indeed, XYZ Dragon was really quite valuable at this point. And sure, this is the set that premiered this card. And here we get to see its ghost version. As Dark Rebellion was really very strong and completely sought after. Being able to target a monster at this time, um, halve its attack and add it to your own. We, you got to remember at this point in time, Cosmos um, did not really exist. Uh, did Cosmos exist? Yeah, but targeting protection wasn't a really common feature in Yu-Gi-Oh! Most decks didn't have targeting protection and target protection was usually for archetypes that were really very good. It was usually uh, a very sought after thing, but not very many archetypes had targeting protection. So it was the exception more not the rule as it is today where everything has targeted protection but back then targeted protection wasn't something that everything had so every so cards that could target cards were really were really very good at this point and so our support update includes melodious super heavy samurai the solemn series shadal telonite and yang zing on the solemn series we have one of the most uh, the introduction of a new Solemn, Solemn Scolding, allowing you to pay 3,000 life points to activate its effect. Indeed, it did have a use in one meta scene, but otherwise, apart from this exclusive meta scene, which had in the Pendulum era, which had Scolding being used, it has never been used again. Um, it's extremely, extremely bad Solemn. A Solemn Judgment and Solemn Warning and Solemn Strike are all the Solemn boys that were used in the Solemn series. Unfortunately, Solemn Scolding got a scolding from the community as it was just completely useless. And it's, in to this day, has never caught relevancy. Yeah. To grade this set, I grade it S tier. That's an amazing grade. Indeed, that is the case. This is a fantastic set and an exceptional set at that. True, it introduced Cleese again. The aspect of a boss monster was introduced into the game. Sure, these are things that right now we do not like about Yu-Gi-Oh! And a lot of players left the game and a lot of newcomers as well who play Yu-Gi-Oh! as well. Um, we really don't like how Yu-Gi-Oh! is going. It's very fast-paced with all this negate nonsense as they like to call it and this is where it started this is where it really started from the aspect of a boss monster the aspect of all these negative things that we see in Yu-Gi-Oh! Klee is really the opponent or really the starting point of all these negative aspects of Yu-Gi-Oh! that we see today so bear in mind Klee is responsible for all these things that are bad in Yu-Gi-Oh right now. But regardless, at this point, at that point in time of the release of this set, it was a fantastic set. It really challenged. Ah, <laughs> oh, I love the puns here. The game itself. Uh, Klee's really challenged the game itself. We can say it was a new challenger. Laugh at my joke, I'm funny. Yeah, oh, we love this. We love the puns. But essentially, being a new challenger to the meta scene, um, changing the meta scene and Yu-Gi-Oh as a whole to a completely different game, adding again power creep for the first time, but also adding fundamental Yu-Gi-Oh game change that I think no one ever talks about. The construction of how cards have been after this point changed. The way Konami saw cards as well and the way the constructed monster effects changed. We and. It is important to realize that Klee is the introduction of a shift in R&D and card destroy and card creation from in Konami's point in making cards that are more boss centric focused monsters that do two or three things cards that have that now facilitate one card combos you got to remember a lot of the speed of how Yugi has gotten faster Klee's um has inspired all of this and that's really all I've got to say about this this video so as I like to say you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master my fate right is in your hands